Welcome back, folks. So we're on our first example problems of solving exponential and logarithm equations and inequality. So we're first going to be talking about exponential equations and how to solve them in different kinds of ways, which these first three examples are very similar to what we've already been doing in the unit. So basically, if we have two exponentials on either side of an equation, Okay, basically our goal is to get the same base on both sides. Okay, and once we do that, we can set the exponents equal to each other and solve for x, which is using this property right here, which states if you have the same base, that means that your exponents are equal. So, we've done this plenty of times. So, looking at our first example problem, holy hot dog, do you guys already see that the bases are the same on both sides? Look at that. So, since our bases are already the same on both sides, we can go ahead and set our exponents equal to each other. Okay, so now what I'll have is x plus 2 will equal 2x. And all i got to do from here is solve for x. So, the first thing we need to do is combine our x's. So we need to bring them on to the same side of our equation. So, I'm going to bring my current x to the other side. That way I can keep my x's as a positive number. So there's secretly a 1 in front of this x. And to move a positive to the other side of an equation, we have to subtract it. So I'm going to subtract it on both sides of my equation. x minus x is 0 cancels out. Alright, and 2x minus x is x. Okay, so currently we have 2 equals x. Okay, and I personally like to write my x on the left hand side because that's just how I am. So my final answer would be x equals 2. And that's it you guys for the first one. Nifty. Okay, now the next two example problems are kind of like what we did in the last section at the very end. Okay, still our goal is to get the same base on both sides, but this time it's a little harder to get the same base on both sides. So if you guys understand what we did in the last unit when we did this, go ahead and pause the video and see if you get example 2 right, and then example 3. Okay, so when we're trying to get the same base on both sides of our equation, Okay, we want to think of a number that not only goes into each of our bases, but can be raised to an exponent that will give you each of our bases. So, let's think of a number that goes into 27 and 9. Well, probably your thirst first thought would be 9. Okay, but let's think about this. I need to be able to raise 9 to a power to get 27 and 9. Okay, so 9 to the first power will definitely give me 9, but let's think about if it will give me 27. So... 9 to the second power gives me 81. Shucks. Okay, so that does not work. So we have to think about a different number that goes into 27 and 9 and that I can raise to an exponent to get 27 and 9. Holy hot dog, you guys already thought of it about, sorry, thought, thought about it. It is 3. You're correct. So 3 works. So I'm going to make each of my bases now a 3. Okay, and I need to think about a number that I can raise to an exponent to get what I originally started with. Okay, and when I do this, okay, I'm going to keep my current exponents. They don't just go away. So I'm going to write in my x minus 2 and my x still. So they're still there. We're not using them yet, but they still are hanging out there. Okay, so now let's think about a, an exponent that I can raise 3 to to get 27. So let's see here. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So, 3 to the third power will give me 27. Okay, so all I did, I rewrote 27 as 3 to the third. Alright, same with 9. Let's think about what power of 3 will give me 9. 3 times 3 is 9. There we go. So my exponent is 2. Okay, so all I did, I rewrote 9 as 3 squared. Alright guys, let's start combining those exponents. So, I'm going to rewrite this as 3 on both sides. Alright, so remember you guys, when you have an exponent next to another exponent, you have to multiply them together. So this first one's going to be 3 times x minus 2, which I'm going to write it like this. 3 parenthesis x minus 2, that means times. And then 2 times x is 2x. 
Alright, so I'm so close, I still need to combine my exponent, so I'm going to combine this over here, which when we have a number outside of a parenthesis, the way that we combine them is by distributing. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the 3 to the x and the 2. Alright, let's see what happens, you guys. Alrighty, so 3 times x will give me a 3x. And 3 times negative 2 will give me a negative 6. Alright, I'm going to bring down my 2x. Holy hot dog, do you guys see now that my bases are the same? Look at that. We got a 3 on both sides of our equation. So now that our bases are the same, I can drop my exponents down and set them equal to each other. So I'm going to have 3x minus 6 equals 2x. And from here, I just have to solve for x. So I'm going to bring this up here since I'm running out of space. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, I'm going to actually write it up here again because I'm out of space to work. So the first thing, we must bring our x's together. Okay, they are besties and they need to go together. Okay, so since this is the only thing on this side, it's probably better just to leave it there. So I'm going to bring this 3x to the other side. Okay, so since it's a positive 3x, the way we move it over is by subtracting. 3x minus 3x cancels and turns to 0. 2x minus 3x is negative 1x. So currently I have negative 6 equals negative 1x. Alright guys, we're so close, we got to get x by itself. And currently that negative 1 is getting in the way, which it is secretly multiplying to my x. So the way that we move negative 1 to the other side is by dividing it. That's the opposite of multiplication. Alright, and negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6. And negative 1 divided by negative 1 cancels and turns to positive 1. So I could write this as 1x or just x. So my final answer, since I'm weird and I like to write my x on the left hand side, it'd be x equals 6, which is the same thing as 6 equals x. So you can write it either way. Awesome job, you guys. Alright, now example 3. Same idea, but we have a fraction to deal with, which we can handle it. We've dealt with fractions before in these scenarios. Okay, so again, the first step, we need to try to get the same base on both sides. Okay, so before I think about that, I'm just going to focus on this 4 down here. I don't care it's a fraction. If I can get this 4 and this 8 to have the same base, I'm going to be on the right track. So I need to think of a number that goes into both 4 and 8. And I can also raise to a power to get 4 and 8. So your first thought might be 4. So let's see if that works. So 4 to the first power will give me a 4. But 4 times 4 is already higher than 8. That's 16. So I can't use 4. So the only other thing, you guys got it, is 2. Okay, so I'm going to make each of these have a base of 2. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite 4 in my denominator with a base of 2. Okay, and if I rewrite that 2, let's see here, 2 times 2 gives me 4. Holy hot dog, so this is 2 squared. Okay, I'm bringing down my x because that doesn't just go away. It's still in my exponent. And now I need to think of 2 to what power will give me 8. So let's see here, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So that would be to the third power. Holy hot dog, you guys. Alright, now before I can even work with this, I need to get this out of the denominator. When it's in the denominator, I can't really work with it. Okay, so we need to bring this bad boy to the top of our fraction, which if you remember from the last section, the way that we move things from the denominator to the numerator is by changing our exponent to a negative. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the negative 2. Alright, that's all that you do. You just change the exponent to the opposite sign, which it was positive 2, so now it's negative 2. Alright, and then this will equal, now remember, when you have an exponent right next to another exponent, guess what you do with them? You guys already knew, you multiply them. You guys are so smart. So now, do you guys see, not only do we have the same base, but... They are both in the numerator. So now we can use this lovely property up here and set our exponents equal to each other. Alright, so I'm going to bring on down my exponents. Bring them on down. And I'm left with negative 2 equals 3x. 
K and all I have to do is get X on one side by itself. So currently this three is in the way, which it's secretly multiplying to my X. So the way we move it to the other side is by dividing both sides by three. Okay, so three divided by three will cancel out and turn to one. So technically on the left hand side, I have one X, or you can just write that as X. Okay, and on the other side, I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, since fractions are our friends. Okay, so this will be negative two-thirds equals x, or, you know me, I like to put my x on the left-hand side, so I can just flip this equation around. This is the same thing as x equals negative two-thirds. And that would be my final answer, you guys. Alright, we have tackled exponential equations. Why don't we just step it up a notch and apply a different property while we solve exponentials?